so sad. Do you think some super glue will do? It's bittersweet coming to the end of a project. Uh, I've been living with this, uh, with this guitar for a year now, which is insane because it was supposed to take a, a, a day or two. We've got the back and sides together. Uh, I had decided not to have any bracing on the back and I'm now actually second guessing myself, so watch the space. The front, last week I played around with this tiny rosette full of many, many tiny little pieces and that was fun. But today I need to, I need to cut the sound hole out. I need to put uh, bracing on the front. I need to glue, figure out what I'm doing on the bracing on the back, if anything. And we need to glue the top down. What I currently don't have is a, a radius or a curve of any sort on the top. Uh, I need to sort that out, which is going to be fairly easy. I'm not going to be using a radius dish. Uh, I, I want more of a, a, a cone. I don't even know if the Martin Backpacker, which this is loosely based on, has a curved top. Let's figure out what's happening, shall we? Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to my home studio. And welcome to this insanity. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> That's the point at the end. And I've already done it on the other side. Of course I did that last week. Well, I suppose this is an opportunity to double check. Yep. Fine, I did it correctly the first time. Of course I did. This uh, end block here is currently proud, so I need to get rid of that. So you see how I'm struggling to, to plane that because it's end grain. If I put a little bit of water on there, it'll go much, much easier. There we go. I might need to go with a chisel as well. There we go. Followed by a leveling bin. Now remember, I'm planning on doing a bit of a curve here, so this is just to make life easier and uh, making sure this all fits perfectly. I want to see what we've got going on, actually. Oh my gosh, we've built a box! So I'm going to cut this oversize in the same way that I've done with the uh, with the back, and uh, yeah, get on with it. I'll start there. Do the size of the scalpel. Okay, cool. I got this. This is the wrong saw to use on a uh, a bench hook. You're supposed to be pushing against that, and I'm using a pull saw. But you know, I, I spend my life being awkward, so here <laughs> we are saying that. I'll support it, so I'm going very gently. Once you've made the initial cuts using the 
straight edge. If you hold your your knife down at a low enough angle, the blade will just follow the initial cut and then you can go deeper and harder. If I hold it up like that, it's just gonna go all wiggly. Who needs a saw? We genuinely have a guitar coming together here. Bring it up. On to cutting out this sand hole, yeah? Where's my saw? Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> I hung it on a light. Now, of course, I could use a router, but I'm doing this with hand tools only. He says, just mentally checking whether he's used any power tools today or not. I don't think I have. The scalpel line's full of uh, full of dust and was fairly gentle in any, in any case. And it's difficult to see. It's a little coarse. <laughs> Through Vintage Tool Shop, I every now and then buy whole collections of of tools and it's it's cool and uh, I found in a workshop that this old guy had made one of these and it's essentially a sanding block with a slit in the middle and it's half round and we've now made it into a product that you can get at Crimson Guitars. You can change the coarseness obviously you can put whatever paper you want in and it's intensely useful and perfect for this job. <laughs> so the edge I'm pushing down on is now supported by the uh, Judas inlay jig. Doing things that are supposed to be absolutely perfect and geometric, etc., by hand is not ever particularly easy. But when it works out, it's incredibly gratifying. <laughs> you can see the numbers. Can you see the numbers? You can see the numbers. To a certain extent, and it depends on the light, of course. I like that. Braces! Okay. This is a chunk of wood. Will the hand sawing never end? My brother made me a knife. And funnily enough, he, he, he put this together for me for, because he saw me struggling with this build earlier in the year. I do have this. Um, I just, I don't, I'm not embarrassed. This is cool. Oh, baby. Of course, it's not going straight because I misjudged where the grain was going. Wow. Okay.
Well, I haven't misjudged anything. The grain's weird as hell. Cool. Uh, this actually works. Cool. And hope that this goes straight this time. It didn't. <laughs> Not even. This wood is insanely bad. Lee cross grained. I thought I was going to be splitting off a nice even wedge down that side, but uh, what we've got is a nice even wedge pretty much on the other. Mostly even. And all I actually need is that length, so yeah, that's fine. We're good. That's cool. That actually might end up being part of uh, the tools that we use rather than the collection. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to have a, a brace on either side of the sound hole. I don't need one back here. I'm tempted to put two just going down there just because it would be pleasing, but it's not required. So I need... Yeah, I need up to about there. This is set up as a scrub plane, isn't it? Oh, yes it is. The scrub plane, we're taking big shavings off to get it roughly flat. Calm things down. Yeah. Almost there. The other side's pretty crap too. I love using wooden salt planes. So that's going to go, yeah, somewhere there on the back. I want to notch it in over the uh, the curving there. Sixty one. Oh, Sixty one. Okay, so that's actually that's perfect. I'm going to actually arch this brace over that central panel, which reduces the uh, the amount of strength that is there, but it's also it's still going to be stronger than if I didn't put one in. Don't do what I do. Plan ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Public safety announcement. If you've got your fingers here on either side of the blade, one thing, if you hit a patch of grain where it's nice and straight, the blade can 
and sometimes does jump two or three inches uh, ahead, specifically if you're doing uh, spruce tops and things like that. The other option is you snap your blade and this little bit that sticks in the front of the blade goes straight down and stabs through your finger. So keep your fingers behind or, uh, or far enough away that's not gonna happen or as in the case here, uh, off, off the line. Magic sanding block. This is incredible. Nice, all right, let's sand those pencil marks off and we can get glue in. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of a, a back bow into it so that the, the, the back, it's flat around the edges, but we'll put a little bit of a curve in there. Tiny. Just adds tension and a bit, bit of strength. I don't want to extol the virtues of the sanding block too much because it then looks like I'm trying too hard to sell a product that we make. But, but also, I genuinely don't know how I live without it. This is uh, very, very useful. We'll do, pig. That'll do. Crumpy calls needed. Woohoo. Get with that done and drying it's on to doing the same sort of thing for the top, although it's going to be easier because it doesn't have ribs getting in the way. Now I'm going to plane to size some, uh, a pair of braces. I need to put a curve on them. How do I do that? I'm not, I'm not, I'm doing this as if I don't have access to a CNC machine to make radius dishes and all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to ask you to call me a genius, but uh, comments would be much appreciated. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, just the ruler between two points, 
held at the rough curve that I want and you got something nice and even to, to draw a curve. You actually do need to check things before you kind of bit in, but uh, nearly there. I want to know how many different planes I've used in this uh, episode. I think it's quite a few actually. Fantastic. I'm going to trim the ends down to fit into the sides after the fact. Okay, and I'm putting it just over the pencil line. Okay, some salt, just a little bit. That's probably too much. Let's get this thing glued down. Now in reality, I didn't actually need to put even that much, just three or four grains would have done the job. Twelve hours later. Before I curve this over, I need to make sure that I've got a hole for that, which is essentially going to be right up next to the top. I am going to use one of my favorite tools, and this is a, a gorgeous little Preston and Sons brace bit handle. So cool. Boxwood, king of woods. Oh, a little bit crunchy there. Hmm, not too bad. Onto the bridge patch. Uh, essentially, that's going to go over here, same slight curve, and uh, I'm not entirely sure on the plans that I found for the Martin Backpacker, I don't even think they have a bridge patch, or at least uh, from the people who drew the plans, didn't realize there was supposed to be one. I'm putting one in. Yeah. Oh. So the scale length is at uh, 15 centimeters away.
So this is the clamping core from the other side. And uh, it's relatively flexible, but I also want to have a bit of an angle. So essentially, I'm gonna be clamping in the middle and the added masking tape, which I've just run out of, is going to create the slight curve that I need. Temporary like. Okay, this time only a few grains of salt, not as much as last. In case you forgot to make a clamping call for this side. I'll, I'll give you two clues. I, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that was me. Do 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 Too busy thinking about everything else. Excuse me, you are not supposed to be flipping around and moving. I thought we've had this conversation. One thing that you don't want to do with these Ibex bridge clamps, because they are after all only cast aluminium, and that is put more pressure on them than you think. Now, then, then, then you should. I am listening to some furious dubstep right now, and uh, I wasn't really concentrating on putting pressure on my clamp and uh, I now have two half clamps. And yeah, every now and then, if I'm having a slow day, I listen to some electronica to get things going. Fight me in the comments. I'm so sad. Do you think some super glue will do? On that front, I am gonna, I am gonna call this a day. In the next episode, I guarantee that this whole thing is going to come, become one. I am going to finish carving the bridge plate, just curve it down a little bit. I'm going to trim the ends off the braces on the top. I'm going to fit it to the body. I'm going to sand the inside of the body a little bit, um, get rid of those horrible numbers and things. And uh, it's all going to come together. I am at that point going to cut the top away from where the neck wants to fit and we're gonna insert that neck. I'm still tempted to make it a bolt-on. What do you think I should do? Should it be bolt-on or not? Uh, we will trim the sides and I know what I'm gonna do with the purfling around everything and it's gonna be beautiful. Thank you for watching. Click like, subscribe. Go and dance around your garden like a loony screaming, I want to be a guitar builder, I want to be a guitar builder, or, I don't know, something strange like that, just because, you know, you want to be a guitar builder. Or you want to, I don't know. Or you can ignore me and just say, hey, I don't do what fools on the internet tell me to. I think I need more coffee. That's the problem. Or more dubstep. Isotunes, Crimson 10.